Hi guys, this is Aaron Runk, and today what we're going to be doing is a setup on our three-axis mill, the Fanuc style Robo Drill. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go behind my machine and turn it on. I already have it on, and what I'll do is I'll come down here to my E stop that's down here out of the screen, and I'll release my E stop. It'll you'll turn it clockwise and it will pop out. And then what I'll do is I'll come over here and you'll see this button will be the only one, the power button. So I'll push that and hold it until my screen comes on. Now once my screen comes on, it will take a couple minutes, about two or three minutes to come on, load all of its uh, settings and parameters. But once it is on, you will see this screen right here. Okay, so from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna arrow over. You'll see that there is a highlighted area I'm going to arrow over to the maintenance display and then I'll push the input button. Okay, so from here, I want to go to my reference point. So in my manual modes, I'm going to go to reference point. So I'll push reference point. Okay, it'll tell me that I need to close, open and close my door or if your door is already open to close it. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my Z, my Z axis, Z plus. It also has a reference return symbol on it. Okay, so I'm going to push and hold until it goes green. Same thing with X. I'll push and hold until it goes green. And with the Y, push and hold until it goes green. All right. So I'm at 100% right now. What I want to do to be on the safe side is I'm going to lower this to 25%. This is the rapid override. So this is how fast the machine goes when it's in a rapiding mode. So I don't want you guys going too fast. 25% is fast enough. Next thing I want to do is I want to see my setup information. So to see my setup information, I have my auto modes. I'll go to edit. And from edit, I'll come up to my screen selection. Okay, so I have position, program, offsets, and then a couple other ones. So what I want to do is I want to hit program. When I hit program, you'll see that I am looking at the program that I want to run. If the program is the right program, it'll say FG. That's called foreground edit. Okay, if it says BG, background edit, you're on the wrong mode. You want to get out of that mode. All right. So this is the front jaw program that I will be running. And what I want to do is I want to get this to where I know what my setup information is going to be. Okay. So what I'm looking at as I'm looking at my setup information, my material, okay? So if we look at our picture, we're gonna see that we have our material, which is the inch and an eight, or I'm sorry, it's a two and an eighth by three and an eighth by one inch thick, okay? So this is the material that I'm gonna be using. I also have my two parallels that are one inch, 250 thousandths tall, okay? So that's an inch and a quarter tall. Make sure they're both the same height, very important, okay? So I also have my one, two, three block. I have my calipers. I have my vice handle and I have my dead blow hammer, okay? Now right here in the middle, I have my gauge, okay? This is how I'm gonna check my hole diameter once the holes are put into the material, all right? So let's come back to our setup and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our offsets page and we're gonna start setting the tool lengths on all the tools on my tool list, starting with one, then go to two, three, four, okay? So on here, it says that it's a three quarter end mill and it has my length of cut and my length from holder, okay? So all these should be established and in the machine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up my door by pushing the button, it will go up green. Open up my door, now that tool is already in the spindle. When I go to set my next tool, I'll show you how that is set, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my handle mode. I'm gonna get my one, two, three block. And if you'll notice, I wanna make sure that I'm right over here with my one, two, three block. So when I come down to touch it, I'm in a nice clean area and I wanna make sure that my one, two, three block slides very nicely on top of the, the table. So I'm gonna come into my handle mode. I wanna be in the it says a hundred times right here, okay? I wanna be in that right there. And then I'll start handling down. I'm going counterclockwise in the negative direction in Z. That's gonna start bringing it down. So what I'll do is I'll come down in Z. Then I'll come over in X. 
Then I'll come over in my Y direction. I can push either Y, it selects both of them. So I'm gonna to come towards my tool. Now if you'll notice, I am below my one, two, three block. Okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push my one, two, three block against my tool, go into my Z increments, and I'm gonna start raising up. And most I don't have my finger on the little knob right here. I have my whole hand on the wheel so I can be in full control of what I'm doing. So I'm gonna come up very slowly until my tool slides underneath my one, two, three block. Once it goes underneath my one, two, three block, I'll lower down a few clicks, push my tool back up against my one, two, three block, and I'm gonna change my incremental feed down here to times 10, okay? That's one thousandths per increment, okay? So if I look up here in my relative, you'll see it's one thousandths. So again, putting pressure against my one, two, three block. Okay, I'm already underneath it, so I'll come down a couple clicks, come back up, and I am underneath it, okay? So with that being said, I'm going to come over to my NC, quick NC button right here, okay? So what I'm gonna do to set my length is I'm gonna go quick NC, I have all these menus right here. I want to hit coordinates, offsets, and then I'm going to come over here. Okay, I'll hit the blue offset. Now I'm going to hit the green offset. Okay, so this is tool number one. I'm going to push auto set. And what it's going to do is it's going to set my length geometry. Okay. So I have a length geometry with a wear column, and I have a radius geometry column with a wear column, okay? So this is gonna take my machine position, and it's gonna take a known distance, okay? And then it's gonna hit execute. It's gonna take those two, put them together. When I hit execute, it's gonna put that number right there, okay? So that is the number that I want in my machine. So with that said, I'm gonna come over here. I'm not gonna put anything in my wear column because I've set it off a one, two, three block. However, this tool is using what we call cutter radius compensation. Okay, so on this one, I'm gonna leave this at zero, but I don't want my hole to be right at tolerance. Okay, I wanna, I wanna ease up into it. So I'm gonna put this as a positive two thousandths. That is decimal zero, zero, two, okay? That's two thousand. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna set the rest of my tools, okay? So I'm gonna go to my quick NC. I'm gonna close my door. I'll hit quick NC again. Okay, so let's go back to our offsets page. So what I'll do is I'll hit end, I'm sorry. We'll hit end. We'll go back to our menu operator. Up here I have tool change, so I'm gonna hit one input, okay? Now I want it to put tool number two in the spindle location. So I'm gonna hit two input. Are you sure? I am sure. I'm gonna hit okay. And it tells me to hit cycle start. So I'm gonna hit cycle start. Okay. And then I'm gonna go right back to coordinate set I'm gonna handle down to my one, two, three block. Okay, oh, gotta put myself back into handle, I'm sorry. We'll increase our increments so we can get down there. When we're close, we'll hit our door open switch. And we'll set the tool length on this one the same way. I come down below the one, two, three block until it goes underneath. I come down a couple clicks, switch my increments, go back up until it slides underneath it again okay I'll come back into offsets remember I'm still in here but I need to click the green offset okay I'll go to my next tool which is tool number two auto set execute all right so there's that number right there let's hit end menu operator close my door I'm gonna go one for tool change, I wanna do number three now. So three input, okay, it's gonna to put tool number three in the spindle. I am sure I hit cycle start. 
And I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's open our door. Go back to offsets. Go back to handle. We'll get down to our one, two, three block. Go below it, come back up until it goes underneath it. Come down a couple clicks, change my increments, and then come up until it goes underneath. Okay, you should still feel it drag underneath it just a little bit. If you're not, that's fine. It's still really, really close, okay? So, green offset, auto set, execute, okay? End, menu operator, close our door, tool change, number four, input, I'm sure, cycle start. Okay, again, open my door, Let's go to handle, offset, increase my increment. Now tool number four is also gonna be using cutter radius compensation. So that means what we need to do is we'll have to put that same value into the wear column on the radius for this tool. Come up underneath it, change my increment. Come up underneath it again, go to my offsets. I'm on tool number four. Make sure you highlight tool number four. Auto set, execute, okay? Last one, end menu operation. Close our door, one, want tool number five, cycle start. And guys, be sure and take your time on this. It's not a race to get done. We have plenty of time to get this done. So let's make sure that we do it right, then we'll do it fast, all right? So this is our last tool. We'll go back to tool number four and we'll input that cutter radius compensation in there in just a second. Okay, I went underneath it, come down a click. There it is. We'll hit our offsets. Tool number five, tool number five. Make sure those two match. Auto set input, or auto, auto set and execute. All right, so let's come back to tool number four. So I'm on the radius geometry, we have a zero. Radius where that has a two thousandths in it, we're gonna do the same thing for that one. We're gonna put decimal two thousandths. That's a decimal zero, zero, two, okay? So if I hide the decimal, and I say two thousandths, that's what it's gonna be, okay? Just put the word thousandths on the end of it. So now all my tools are set. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set our work offsets, okay? So we're gonna hit end. I'm gonna come back to my main screen by hitting quick NC one more time. Okay, that puts us back to our main screen, but we're gonna go back to it because we need to call up our edge finder, which is in location number 10. So we're gonna use our edge finder to check our part, but we're coming back to this screen so that we can see on our setup information what we're edge finding. Where is the work offset on here, okay? So X, Y, okay, remember your right hand rule of thumb, where, okay, X is plus, Y is plus, Z is plus, okay? So that's how you do your right hand rule of thumb. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my quick NC because we know our information. Z0 is the top of the part, we'll do that last. So I hit quick NC and then I'm gonna go up to my tool. So menu operator, close my door. We're gonna go one input, I want number 10 input. I do want that tool, hit a execute, or hit okay. And let's get that tool in the spindle. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We cannot keep my door open when the tool is spinning. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to use this in a way, I'm gonna open up my door so I can clean it a little bit. I'm gonna teach you guys how to 
set your X and Y zero without having the door open because obviously it's a safety thing. We want to make sure you're doing this correctly. So I'll hit quick NC again and I'm in my MDI page. Okay. When I go to quick NC and I change the tool, it automatically puts me in the MDI. But what I want to do now is I want to turn on my spindle. Okay. So before I turn on my spindle, obviously we got to put my material into the machine. So the first thing we want to do is we want to use our parallels. Okay, so our parallels right here are the one inch and one fourth parallel heights. Okay, so I make sure that my vise is nice and clean on both sides. I don't feel any chips. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is load that material. So when I load this material, I want to make sure that all my edges are free of sharp edges so that I don't vise or load onto a sharp edge or obviously for handling purposes I don't want to cut my fingers. So you can put this part anywhere in the vise that you want to. Okay, I'm going to put it about right there. Looks pretty good. And we're going to use our vise handle to hold this part in place. So I'm vising on the part. Now if you'll notice, I want to my uh, parallels move back and forth. Okay, so I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is use my dead blow hammer, and I'm just going to give it a little tap. Notice how they don't move anymore. Okay, that's actually forcing the part onto that material. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and bring my edge finder down and get it going. Okay. So, let's close our door. Let's go to MDI. I'll hit program so that I go into my program mode because I want to be on this screen right here where I can input uh, variables. So let's go S1200 M3. So that's my spindle speed RPMs, revolutions per minute. And then I also have my M3, which is the clockwise direction of the spindle end of block eob okay make sure you push that puts my semicolons in there and then i'll push insert with that said and done i'm going to push cycle start so now my spindle is turning so we'll go into handle and i'll come down until i'm to the left side of my material okay So using my X and my Y's and coming here slow, I'm going kind of fast because I want you guys to see what's going on. Once I'm close to the material, I'm going to change my increments to the times 10, okay? Which is still fast enough for you guys. You guys will come in. So notice that my edge finder is below, okay? Let's see if I can get this to stop turning. Should have a spindle stop. It doesn't look like I can find one. So I hit reset. So what I'll do is you'll be able to see that the bottom of my edge finder is below my material right there, okay? So what I'll do is I'll come back to MDI if I've opened up my door and I'll hit program and I'll type in the same code, spindle speed, spindle direction, end of block, cycle start. So I'll go back to handle and we'll start moving towards it. Now, one thing I want you to notice is this thing is gonna turn over, okay? You're actually gonna see it break over, but it breaks over the other direction, so you can't see that. So one thing you wanna do when your door's closed, we'll come back off of it, is when we're in MDI, okay? We'll open up our door. So that way our spindle stops. Let's go back to MDI, go back to program, I'm going to type in the same spindle speed, but M04 or M4. What that does is going to spin my spindle the other direction. All right, I'll hit cycle start. So I'll show you what that looks like. So now instead of the edge finder breaking over to the back, it's going to break over towards us. So I'm coming into it. Notice how my entire hand is on the wheel and it breaks over, okay? If I want to be accurate about it, I'll come back off of it and just slowly give it some clicks right there. That shows me that's exactly where I want to be, okay? 
So from here, I'm gonna go Z positive. I wanna get this off my material because this is an edge finder, okay? So it breaks over, it sees the edge, but it's not on the center of the edge finder. So I'm gonna go position. I'll push my all button so all my screens are up here. I'm gonna hit X, origin, execute. So what that does up here in my relative section is it's gonna make that a zero, okay? So with that being said, I'm able to go back to my handle mode, go back into X axis, and I'm able to go over, okay, we'll put this at 10 thousandths, 100 thousandths. Now notice how I'm going plus, okay? So now my edge finder should be directly over the edge of my material. And it's 100 thousandths. Now, this number will be whatever the size diameter of your edge finder. So if you have a half inch diameter edge finder, you'll come over 250 thousandths. I'm using a 200 thousandths diameter edge finder. I'm gonna come over 100 thousandths, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my work offsets. I'm gonna go to offsets right here on my screen selection. I'm gonna go to my X axis on my G54, so don't put anything up here on zero, zero, zero. Come down to your G54, and we're gonna hit X, zero, measure. X, zero, measure. That's gonna put the location right there, okay? But you gotta remember, we're wanting to go to the center of the part. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up my door. I'm gonna push the door open button. Open up my door. I'm gonna measure my material to see exactly what it is. So if I'm looking at my material, I'm measuring three inches, 90,000, okay? So what I'll do is I'll pull out my calculator and I'll actually measure it out. Well, it's pretty close to three inches 100, but we're machinists, so we're gonna go a lot closer than that. So three inches, 90 thousandths. That's three inches, 90 thousandths. Okay, divided by two equals one inch, 545 thousandths. So that's how far we need to go over in our relative right now, okay? because we came over a hundred thousandths for our edge finder, so we know we're on the edge. So we'll go back to our position page. We'll do our relative again. We'll go X, origin, execute, and we're gonna move over that one inch, 545 thousandths, okay? So X axis, let's come over. One inch, 500, and 45,000, so we're close to it, so I'm gonna change my increments. Change my increment one more time. One inch, 545,000. That is where the X zero has to be, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to my offsets, okay, my offset screen, and I'm gonna come up to X zero, right? My X axis, I'm gonna do it again, X, zero measure so that is the correct distance now if i wanted to i could actually do this as a plus input so if it was let's see let's do this this minus 1.545 plus input so that's where we were before so if i'm on the edge instead of coming over physically with the machine i can also do it this way i can come over one inch 545 thousandths and i can hit plus input that's the number we were just on. That's where we're at, okay? Doesn't matter which way you do it, I just recommend that you do it right, okay? So, we're gonna go ahead and close our door. We need our spindle running again because now we need to find our Y zero. So we're gonna go back to MDI. We're gonna hit program because we're not on the right screen. And I'm gonna do S1200 M Okay, I can do M4 or M3 because I can see on either side of the, the edge finder, okay? Well, we'll go ahead and do four. Keep it simple. 
in the block, okay? Insert. S1200 M4 cycle start, okay? So we'll go back to our handle. Now remember, we're in the Y axis now, so I gotta change to the Y axis, okay? I'll stay in my thousandths increments because that's fast enough. I'll come down in my Z. Make sure you go plenty far past whenever you're doing this, okay? So I'm gonna start coming in real slow until my edge finder breaks over, okay? Back it off, come back again. It broke over. Let's come up in Z, okay? And then we're gonna go to position. We're gonna go Y, origin, execute. Okay, remember we're coming over half the diameter of my edge finder and my edge finder is 200 thousandths. So we'll switch back to my Y. And remember, I'm gonna be going in the minus direction this time because I did the back side of my part, okay? So what I've got here is a minus 100 thousandths. I'm gonna hit origin, okay? Y origin, execute. And then I'm gonna measure my part, okay? So let's open up my door. We're gonna see what it measures, okay? So I believe this material is a little bit bigger than what we're using, but that's fine. So this material is measuring two inches, 520 thousandths, okay? So if I do that, I'm gonna put in two inches, 520 thousandths, okay? Divided by two equals one inch, 260 thousandths. That's what I need to put in there, okay? So remember, it's gonna be a negative because I'm going back towards me. So we're gonna do this the second way that I just showed you. So we'll go to offsets. I'm gonna hit Y, zero measure okay so that's where i'm currently at right now now i'm going to do a minus one inch 260 thousandths that's going to push us closer to the center of the part plus input okay ask me if that's sure make sure you input your numbers correctly hit execute all right so now we have both our x and our y and if you want to, you can go into handle, and we can handle to the correct position, okay? It's whichever way you guys want to do it. So I'll go ahead and position, Y, origin, execute. We need to come over in our Y, one inch, 260 thousandths. So if you look at our absolute, that's exactly where we are at right now. So that's great. We want all that to look good. So now what we're gonna do is the last thing, we're gonna set our Z, all right? So to set our Z, I need one of our tools that we set with a tool link. So I'm gonna grab our number three center drill, which is tool number two. I'm gonna close our door. We're gonna go to quick NC. I'm gonna go to one for tool change, make sure I'm on my menu program and I want tool number two. Hit okay, execute. Oh, are you sure? I am sure. See if it'll give it to me this time. Oh, it's in an operation mode. So what we'll do is we'll hit cancel. We'll go to program, MDI. Okay, program, we're gonna call G53 in the block insert. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna cancel everything, okay? So I'm gonna hit cycle start. So now, fingers crossed, we'll go back to quick NC. Go to one input. I wanna call up tool number two. Okay, says I'm in an automatic mode. Press the reset key, I hit the reset. There we go. There it goes. So, once we do that, we can hit the reset key. If that doesn't work, try the G53. All right. All right, we're back in business. Let's open up our door. 
So what we're gonna use is a piece of paper to touch our tool off the top of the part because Z0 is the top of my material. So we're gonna go in the handle. We're gonna come down in our Z axis. Okay, once I get close, I'm gonna change to my lower increment. So I'm gonna use my piece of paper. I'm gonna wiggle it back and forth until the paper stops moving. Okay, once I'm close, I'm gonna put my whole hand on the hand wheel and go back and forth until my paper stops moving. Okay, my paper has stopped moving. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my work offset. So we're gonna hit quick NC. We're gonna to go to offsets and we're on our work offsets. If it comes up to this page right here, simply come down here and push work offsets, okay? We're going to go back to our offset page because we need to know the length of that tool, okay? Whatever tool I'm using to set the tool length with is the number I've gotta write down. So we're gonna remember this. I'll go ahead and write it into my calculator. That number is three inches, nine hundred, two thousandths, and three tenths, okay? So we need to remember this. So I'm gonna hit work offsets, and I'm going to hit Z, three inches, nine hundred, two thousandths, three tenths, okay? Type in Z, the tool length of the tool, and then I'm gonna push measure. Okay, so that looks right. So with that said, we are totally set up and ready to go. So what we need to do now is we need to get our tool back to home. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and handle up off that material. Okay, we'll get our paper and our one, two, three block out of the machine. Okay, and I'm gonna change one thing real quick to my program. I'm gonna put what they call a forward slash into my program, so that way my coolant won't come on when I'm doing this, okay? Now I will have it come on for a second, that'll be fine. Okay, we're gonna see how this goes. I'm gonna close my door. I'm going to go into memory, okay? I have my correct program up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit program again, and I'm going to hit check, okay? Because what I want to do is I want to see my program and my distance to go, okay? Distance to go is very critical. I need to know where this is at, okay? So from here, it's going to be pretty simple. We're going to hit cycle start, okay? Keep your hand on the red feed hold button, okay, that's right here, because you don't want that going into your part. So I'm gonna hit cycle start. It's gonna change to tool number one. So it is gonna start. It's got my coolant on, that's fine. So I'm gonna stop it one inch above my material, okay? So this program says it needs to go 100 thousandths above my part. My distance to go says it has about 5 eighths left to go. If I look in the machine, I see that looks good. It looks like 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our feed rate a little bit low, hit cycle start again, and we're gonna go just real slow into it. That looks good. Now, when I'm running, I want to make sure my M01 is active. That way I can stop my machine after every tool and see if everything looks good. Okay. Notice how I'm at 25% rapid. That's fast enough. It's going to come to a safe spot to do a tool change. Good, so I can see that my material is cleaned up. If you'll notice, the back is not because the material is wider. So next tool is my tool number three.
it'll come in, it's gonna center drill your part. Once it's center drilled, it will go through and drill it as well. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit so you guys can see everything. So I'm gonna come through and then drill the small holes. Then it's gonna come through and drill my second small hole. And then after this, it's gonna start doing my end milling. these holes get done uh, being in milled out we'll use that uh, measurement gauge I call it a, a dial uh, not a dial bore gauge but a uh, tri mic is what I call it uh, I call it bore micrometers is the correct name for them and what I'll do is I'll measure the hole and then I'll be able to see what that actual hole measures and once this part's done I'll show you where at on your offsets screen that will be adjusting the size of that hole. So right now it's doing its finishing passes. Now we're gonna do the last two holes as well. Getting pretty close. We want to keep our eye on the screen. All right, now our part is completely done. All right, so what we're going to do is we'll open up our door. We'll take our gauges after you blow it all off, and what we'll do is we'll check it. Okay, so once we check it and we see that it looks good will be fine, but if my hole checks too small, what I'll want to do is I want to adjust it. So if I want to adjust it, I'll go to my offsets, screen selection. I don't want to be on work, I want to be on offsets. And I want to come over to my where column, okay? So both of these tools needed to have three more, four more thousands taken out of the hole. So I'm gonna put this at a minus four thousandths okay that's how much you need to come out of the hole because it measures that much small and i'm going to hit plus input okay i'll hit execute 
I'll come down to the other one and I'll do a minus four thousandths plus input execute now I want to rerun the both those holes again so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to edit program I'm gonna hit reset so I know I'm at the top of my program and then I'm gonna go down to tool number one okay oh let's hit program one more time so that we're on our big page right here T1 down now this is the very top of the program that's where it faces it this tool runs twice so T1 again down arrow that's where it searches so now I want to make sure that I start on my M01 so what we'll do is we'll close our door we'll go back to memory and I'll hit cycle start again it'll ask me if I'm sure I want to start in the middle of the program I do And what it's going to do is it's going to go back through and run both of those holes again. And as you could hear, it was cutting a little bit more out of the hole. So that four thousandths adjustment that we made, it's taking two thousandths off of each side of the hole, the left and right. And that's going to be a total of four thousandths bigger than where we were currently at. I know this video is pretty long, but it will be worthwhile once you get it all done. So for this, I'll, I'll turn off my coolant so you guys can kind of see what's going on inside the hole. So it's roughing in levels and then it comes back up after it gets to its final level and it'll actually finish out the whole hole, the entire hole. There it goes. I'll go ahead and turn my coolant back on for a minute. Okay. Once this uh, part gets done, I'll take my gauges again and I'll measure them to make sure that they're in the right location. And if everything comes out good, then I know I have a good part. Okay? We'll open up our door, measure our part, and if everything's good on it, we know that we did a very good job. All right? So from here, just be sure and uh, ask any questions with your instructor, see if there's anything I can help you with. Again, this is Aaron Rump. Thank you for watching.